Hi everyone, welcome back to Miniature War Gaming Warriors. My name is Ken. It's great to have you with us today. Today we're going to be going through the Armies of Germany book. In front of me I've got over seven, I think it's 7,000 points worth of Germans. Uh, these are all my Germans, so we've got everything from Grenadiers to SS. Loads of stuff to go through. What I'm going to do, the format of this, I'm going to go through the book, look up Pacific units, show you off some of the painted models, and uh, yeah, see what you guys think. If you like these videos, make sure to give them a like. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Do lots of great content for bolt action, loads of World War II stuff. Also touch on Warhammer Epic and all that other good stuff. So without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so Germany. I didn't realise how many Germans I actually have. I've got uh, quite a few. <laughs> and um, it's really strange because... I consider myself a British player, yet I have less British than I do Germans. I seem to have a lot of Germans. I think it's like nearly 7,000 points worth. So the armies, are, the armies of Germany book, basically you get this along as with the bolt action rule book. So you need to buy this separately. I think they're about 20 pounds. And it just gives you all the flavor for the German faction. It tells you all the special rules. Um, and it also gives you the army special traits, which I'll go through in a minute. But as you can see, with the covers, some lovely artwork in these books. Uh, it gives you like little rundowns. It tells you like top secret. Gives you like little flavour bits. Like this one's about the SS. Uh, you got end of the Blitzkrieg. It's like going for a history. You've got the fall of the Third Reich. So the end. But that's what we've come for is the army lists. So special rules. Start with Blitzkrieg, so German officers were expected to act on initiative and take decisions on the field based on their judgement rather than wait for orders or confirm from HQ. This made them very effective tactical commanders and made for the Wehrmacht a formidable reactive force. German officers using the U, U men, oh yeah there you go, U men snap to action special rule can take one additional order dice from the bag and assign it as normal. So it's good. So it just explains what it is. So if you've got a second lieutenant, so an Oberleutnant, you can. Um, no, it's a Leutnant, isn't it? It's an Oberleutnant. It's one of the two, I always get confused. But second lieutenant equivalent would be instead of just getting the one order dice, you now get two. Uh, and the other one is if you get two, you now get three. And so on and so forth. And it goes up and up and up and up and up. Yeah. There you go. Leutnant is the first one. Oberleutnant. Hubman for a captain uh, gets to take five. Wow, that's uh, no take four, and a major gets to take five. Wow, that is a that is a lot. So we're going to go through these rules, and I'm going to tell you what I think of them on a one to five scale, how actual good they are. So for me personally, I always forget to use this rule. <laughs> I really should use this rule a lot more because it is a really good rule, and I would definitely give this probably a four out of five. Uh, over the bolt action uh, army special rules in general it's a fantastic rule it gets you to be able to activate more dice get more dice out of the bag so if you've got you know you've got your officer here and he's uh, next to say he's a first lieutenant he's got two squads next to him he can activate both squads as well as himself but what you must remember is you must always complete this move first so you do snap to um, and if he does like a fire order or a you know advance order he has to do that before you do the others so otherwise what you could have a scenario have you got a platoon like a section of guys over here he does a snap to advance order and then you would be able to pull those uh, section out of the bag which you can't do that's a big no-no so we'll stick him back there so that is a really good one then you've got initiative training I do use this rule quite a bit and I really like it and I'm gonna give it a five out of five because I think it's really good and um, so basically my bane especially if I've been playing tabletop simulator with Dom is snipers so snipers can target your NCOs in squads which is quite painful to be honest with you because they take a morale hit so say they get sniped the NCO gets sniped with this on a roll of a two plus so Roll the dice, two plus once he's killed. You, someone from your squad, you can promote to an NCO. 
so you don't get lose that uh, morale bonus. So that is that is definitely a plus side, and it's not just once you can keep doing that, which is really really nice. Another great rule, five out of five again. Hitler's buzzsaw. So Germany, MG42, it's famous for it. Absolutely amazing. And the MG34, I should say. Their machine guns, amazing. And their squads were built around their machine gun section. So the light or medium machine guns can fire one extra shot. That That is banging. And that's on tanks as well. That is really good. So each, each section I try to run an LMG and each time uh, they fire they get an extra shot so they get I think it's six shots instead of five with an LMG which is very nice especially on a tank especially if you've got two of them um, on like vehicles like a half track or something like that it's very nice and then the Tiger Fear special rule this has now been nerf hammered so originally it was if you could see any vehicle that's got the Tiger Fear rule on the battlefield so you had line of sight to it no matter how far it was you would have to take a Tiger Fear test, I think it's 12 inches now, if you're within 12 inches of it um, and you've got line of sight, then you have to take the test. So it's been nerfed quite quite heavily, but um, yeah, you've got a lot of salty German players, me included, but it was such a good rule at the time, so that was a 5 out of 5. I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5 now, um, just because it is handy to have if you're in like a city fight. You'd, you, you've got, uh, say, Russians. Coming up and trying to chuck uh, any tank grenades and stuff at it. Got to take a Tiger to Fear test, which is still handy to have. So that is now a 3 out of 5 instead of a 5 out of 5. So overall, the special rules for the army, really good. Happy with every single one of them. There's no negative one there, unlike some of our armies. So let's carry on. So... Headquarters units, officers, okay, so you got a choice, standard for every army, so you've got to have your main key unit, so you've got to have an officer and you've got to have two infantry sections. With the Germans you get the choice of a regular or veteran, no inexperience here because in the eyes of the fluff and the rules you didn't get experienced, inexperienced German officers, that's why you get that extra buff of when you take out the extra dice. So that's very nice. Standard, you get to choose a pistol, submachine gun, assault rifle, or whatever's depicted on the model. So my guy here, he's got an assault rifle. This is where hopefully I've done it right, and it should cut to all my officer models. Should, should cut. <laughs> and uh, now it should cut back. So just standard. So now we've got medic. So I've got quite a few medics. For my grenadiers, I don't have a dedicated medic model. Uh, if I want to, I could mix up one of my earlier war Blitzkrieg German medics. I've got three different types of those, but you'll soon see the three models. I love the one with the stretcher, and I also love the guy that is wounded and down. If you're interested in where I got these models, they were sent to me by the Assault Group Miniatures. Really lovely models. They're metal. They're one piece and they are absolutely fantastic. Really, really can't recommend the Assault Group enough. Lovely, lovely sculpts. Um, hope you'll agree with me. So he's 30 points. You can only take him as veteran. He can have up to two further men. They've got to be veteran as well. So very nice. Um, with myself, with the medics, I should start using them a little bit more because I seem to get, I seem to take a lot of casualties. If you've got the extra points in, and you've got 30 points sitting around. You can't fit another machine gun. You can't fit a machine gun team, for example. Might be worth considering taking a medic. So next up, Ford Observer. You should see my Ford Observer models now. And I've got artillery and Air Force Observer. So I've got a forward artillery or forward air observer. Different points uh, for different things. So artillery officer will be 100 at regular and Air Observer be 75. I tend to only use the Artillery Observer if I'm playing in like Normandy sort of theatre and things like that, France. I have got an Air Observer which I would use for my Africa Corps guys. That's the only time I'd really use that and that's more to do with flavour and fluff. Um, just because I feel like the guy that's got the radio set 
he's more of an air observer than an artillery observer calling in an airstrike. He can be accompanied by two men at the cost of 10 points each for regular or 13 points for vet. So standard, just your normal rules for that. Okay, so now we get into like the basic infantry. So you've got your hair infantry squad. Standard 50 points, comes with one NCO and four men. You can take up to five additional men in this squad for 10 points each. The NCO can swap out his gun for a submachine gun for three points. One man can have a light machine gun, but you must remember another model becomes a loader. So the easy way to remember that is obviously model your sections with like an ammunition carrying crate, uh, an ammo box, sorry, I should say, or if they've got like machine gun belts around their neck, it just helps you pinpoint which one's the actual loader. Because you never know, a sniper for some reason might decide to kill the loader uh, and make the machine gun useless. So... In Scott, you can also, I've never done this, but you can take the entire squad may mount bicycles for one point per man. Again, if you've got some points left over, you can always chuck it into that. The squad can also be given anti tank grenades for two man, uh, two points per man. So, special rules for these tank hunters only if you get the anti tank grenades. I'll explain what that rule is later. And bicycles, they allow, in which case, for double their run movement, so 24 inches instead of 12. So if you really want to get those guys out there quick and you don't want to spend the money on like a half track, you can give them bicycles. So, more fluff, just about the machine guns. So you've got a veteran infantry squad now. 65 points, same loadout as the regular squad, all the same buffs, all the same uh, special rules. No different to that, except for these guys are veteran, I believe, yet. Yeah, it's only one uh, machine gun. Yep, yeah, only one machine gun as well. And anti-tank grenades. So, yeah, there's the special rules for tank hunters on bicycles. Probably a good idea if I explain what that is, actually, now, because we're probably going to see that quite a lot. So, the tank hunter special rule, normally you have to take a, I believe it's like a morale check, if you're going to attack um, a tank. With the tank hunter's rule, I believe you do not have to take that check. Right, so go to the next unit now, and I'm going to skip any units I don't actually physically have a model for because I'm not going to be using them because I can't explain how I'm going to run them. So next squad is going to be the Hare Grenadier squad. So in 1943, the title of infantry is trained to Grenadier. It's basically to improve morale, and um, you know you used to have the Panzer Grenadiers reputation and kudos. So it's just to give them a buff of morale basically to be called a Grenadier. Um, so, best light machine gun of the war, you, squads carry two. So, this is where it gets juicy late war for the Germans, really. So, regular infantry squad, you can have 50 points again. You can have five additional men at 10 points each. NCO, you can change out for a submachine gun. You can also change up to the NCO, and well, the NCO and up to two men can have assault rifles instead of their normal rifle, so you get three assault rifles on a squad if you want to take it. One man can have a light machine gun, and four men can have up to can have Panzerfaust. If you take a Panzerfaust, you can't take the anti-tank grenades. So these guys they only get the one machine gun. I believe it's the veteran squad that get the two, but still again I would run a machine gun, probably two assault rifles or three assault rifles, depending on the model can I have and go for it like that basically and the same is going to be for the veteran grenadier squad except for this time if i'm running them in veterancy i'll probably kit out with two machine guns just to take advantage of that hitler buzzsaw rule um i'd probably give them a panzerfaust as well because it's always nice to have some anti-tank capability but if i took the two machine guns i'd probably think twice possibly about taking the assault rifles just to save a little bit on points but if i was going for a real elite force i'd probably kit most of the guys out with assault rifles so you can have up to nine men can take assault rifles so you could basically have two machine guns and the rest of assault rifles always found that a bit of a waste of points because my two loaders i'd normally arm with a rifle because you're paying for the extra five points so say like you, you pay an extra 10 points to give those guys assault rifles which they'll probably never use so just keep them as normal rifles so that's the uh hair grenadiers so next squad is pioneer squad 
I'm going to talk about these and I'm also going to talk about the Assault Engineer squad because I do have Pioneers and depending on the flavour of the day is depending if I'm going to run them as a Pioneer squad or a Assault Grenadier squad. Um, so, a little bit of background to this. All Panda divisions include their own organic combat engineers known as Pioneers or Panzer Pioneers. They are equipped for attacking enemy fortifications as well as mine clearance and demolition. Unlike other nations engineers, they were regarded as combat troops and were often called up to lead attacks against the toughest enemy positions, frequently riding into battle with armoured carriers. So I do have a half track for these guys, and it is the correct one. It's the actual Pioneer's half track for the Stalingrad board when it comes up. Still need to paint it, it is built, so looking forward to doing that. But my actual, my actual uh, Pioneer squad... It's got quite a bit of flexibility in it, so I've got in it, well, for this Pioneer squad anyway, you can have one NCO, four men is the minimum, they are veteran, so just remember that, you can't take these guys as regular or inexperienced because they are the elite, so you can add up five guys with riflemen, so you can have a ten man squad, the NCO and up to six men can have submachine guns instead of their rifles, one can carry an LMG, one can carry a flamethrower and the squad can be given anti-tank grenades so they get the tank under special rule. So for me, I run these guys with no machine gun. I do give them the flamethrower and I tend to, however many men I've got extra, give them submachine guns because these guys are going to be right up there in the thick of it in the close quarters. So they get the um, assault special rule when it comes to close combat um, and they also get the flamethrower which is absolutely amazing if you can get it up there and as long as it doesn't get picked off by a sniper but that's one section of them you've also got the assault engineer squad this one has got a lot of flavor to it a lot of extras so German assault engineers were skilled at building all manner of fortifications communication lines tank traps and minefields in addition to building useful structures they were adept at the deconstruction of similar enemy positions Blowing up railway lines and making roads unsafe for the enemy to travel along. As the German quest for global superiority stalled and finally crashed down, around them the pioneers were tasked with the vital job of slowing the Allied advance. Be it by booby trap minefields, blowing bridges or taking the fight directly to the enemy, often overlooked in flavour of dashing panzers or elite Waffen SS, the pioneers were unsung heroes of the German military machine. So what it's saying here is there was a lot of pioneer squads and they didn't get the recognition. So with these, you again, standard 65 points for your five man team, all armed with rifles. Then you can start mixing it up a bit. So you can add an extra five guides. The NCN up six men can have machine gun, some machine gun, sorry. Um, one man can have an LMG. I still wouldn't take the LMG. Up to one man can have a flamethrower, definitely. Um, but you've got to remember another person becomes an assistant. One man can have a storm pistol. Oh, I can't even pronounce that. I'm going to say storm pistol. Storm pistol. That's what I'm going to say. It. Instead of a rifle for five points. One man can have a GBR 39 grenade launcher instead of a rifle for 30 points. Yes, I do that. And four men can have Panzerfaust. I would probably give two to this squad. Um, it just depends, really. So, storm pistol. This weapon can be treated like a Panzerfaust, except for. It only has a range of 6 and the pen value of plus 3. It can, however, this is the interesting bit, be filed normally once per turn and not just once per game. So you can uh, do it every turn. So if he survives for 6 rounds, you can shoot it 6 times, which is absolutely banging. And then the GBR 39 grenade launcher. Every time this model fires this weapon, you can choose either two of the profiles. So you've got an anti-personnel version, which is indirect, HE 1 inch template, 1 shot, 624. Or you've got an anti-tank, so you've got a minimum range on that. So just remember that for your anti-personnel. Or your anti-tank is 24 inches, has a plus three, and it's got the shape charge special rule. Very nice. So yeah, I would take both of those because these guys are getting up close and personal. What doesn't tell you in here, which is very interesting actually, it must have come in an errata, is you can also take, uh, say, mine clearance capabilities for one point. Uh, if you check out Easy Army Army Builder and stuff like that, uh, and I'm sure it's in the FAQs, you can pay one point um, per man in the squad to get mine clearance capabilities, so it helps you defuse mines for those scenarios where you are actually playing mines. 
um, as you can see in the models I've got here the Pioneers are unique compared to their other flick screen counterparts they've got special backpacks and I have also kit them all out with the special weapons for the different varieties I, I do like the flame for a flamethrower and I really do like the mine uh, sweeper really happy with how that one's turned out as well so moving on Fulcher Jäger I can pronounce that word <laughs> so Fulcher Jäger German paratrooper so they're part of the Luftwaffe and uh, I've got a few Luftwaffe units now so I've got the 88 and I've also got some Fulcher Jäger which is really nice so I've done my Fulcher Jäger in a mix so early and late war scheme painting depending on how I feel at the time is depending on where, if I'm going to play an early war game or a late war game so I can do a mixed variety so at the minute Fulcher Jäger para, so paratroopers were elite troops who formed part of the Luftwaffe they conducted airborne operations during the invasion of France against Norway and captured the island of Crete in 1941 in Operation Mercury despite taking heavy casualties Crete would be their last major airdrop one problem the paratrooper faced was that their weapons, including rifles and submachine guns, were dropped separately in canisters, meaning that once upon the ground they were unarmed until they could find the canisters recovered. These rules assume the canisters have already been recovered. So this was unique to the Germans. I didn't know this until I looked a bit into the Volkswagen that their weapons were dropped separately. I think that's crazy. So they couldn't afford to be dropped in a drop zone that was surrounded by the enemy because they would just you know they've got no weapon to start fighting with straight away unlike the British and the American paratroopers who had their weapons ready to go as soon as they landed the Germans seem to have not done that which is quite interesting I wonder what the tactical decision behind that was maybe they only dropped paratroopers where they knew there was no enemy so do you know what the answer to that is drop it in the old comment section below I'd be quite interested to find out how that works so again these are elite troops so they are veteran they're 70 points for the five man team, so they're a bit more expensive than Pioneers. So you can have another five men at 14 points each because they're vet. The NCO and up to two men can have submachine guns for three points. One man can have a light machine gun for another 20. And, one, and the squad can be given anti tank grenades, so you get the tank under special rule. So for me, for my early war, I'm going to go with a 10-man squad with a submachine gun, no, sorry, with a machine gun, one guy becoming the loader, and then depending on if I've got the points, maybe give the NCO a submachine gun, or just keep him with the rifle if I want to save points. So they've got a couple of special rules, they've got the tank hunter special rule, as we keep seeing, and they've also got the stubborn special rule. So paratroopers don't give in easily if forced to check the morale they always test on full morale value ignoring any pin markers so that's it that's the same as the british rule so that's really cool really handy to have that that's why you're paying the extra five points compared to the pioneers and i think that's well worth it just for five points for those for that stubborn special rule so moving on we've got fulcher Jaeger, late war variant so the difference between this one and the previous one, you get the Stubborn Special Rule, you also get the Panzerfausts, but you don't get the Tank Hunter Special Rule, so you can't take any tank grenades with these guys, but you do get the Stubborn Special Rule, which is very nice. So how I'd run these late war is basically all assault rifles apart from my uh, loader, loaders if I've taken two machine guns, and yeah, two machine guns and probably two Panzerfausts as well. So some of these squads here are quite interesting. I'll, I'll just I'll talk to them. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about models that I didn't have, but I'll, I'll just give these an honorable mention. Uh, these are the mountain troops, basically. So the Germans have got some mountain troops. So if you if you want to go that sort of way, if you want to do like in Norway and stuff, it actually gives you the options in these books, which is really nice. They, they're basically the same as a veteran infantry squad except for they can take skis so skis ignore movement penalties for snow in the winter conditions and they got tank hunter special rule for the early war late war obviously get the option to take Panzerfaust and lose the tank hunter special rule uh, but they've got the ski special rule as well I can't even pronounce that I want to say Geben Jaeger squad I'm probably completely wrong with that but that's those guys for the mountain troops 
So what I do have is some Waffen SS. Uh, I do have these in early early war, and I do have them late war as well. So my early war ones got a bit of a choice because I've got cavalry, and the guys that come with the cavalry packs, you get a mounted and dismounted version of them. So you could just, if you wanted to run without the cavalry, you could just use the ten man squad. So we'll go through this. So some of these miniatures are from the assault group miniatures, the metal ones. Really, really nice. I'll put these separately so you guys can see what they're like. Really happy with those. And basically the Waffen SS, uh, obviously everyone knows, were an elite fighting for formation separate to the German army and were not strictly part of the Wehrmacht. Often fighting at the forefront of any offensive, they proved themselves dangerous adversaries. They were recruited through the Nazi party and many were fanatical about expanding an ideology of fascism and driven by ugly racial hatred, especially on the Eastern Front. So, I do run these squads. It's a bit controversial, obviously, because um, the SS created did some horrendous war crimes and I'm not condemning that at all. Not So, the SS did some horrendous war crimes and I'm not So the SS, they did some horrendous war crimes and I'm not, you know. The SS did some horrendous war crimes and it's absolutely horrendous what happened. And um, the only reason I run these squads is for a bit of flavor, just to change it up a little bit. Because at the end of the day, history's history, there were SS units. So if I'm running a veteran squad, sometimes I'll run SS over paratroopers. And the reason behind that is this special key rule here is a fanatics key rule again check that in the main bolt action rule but but basically what it means is they don't give up easily they'll keep fighting to the last man which is really cool in if you've got a stubborn enemy when you're in close combat they'll keep going they'll keep going they'll keep going so the veteran you can have five men with rifles an nco and up to two men can have submachine guns and two men can have light machine guns. So remember, this is an early war unit, okay? So these can still have two LMGs. So I would be running two LMGs just for that extra hit the buzzsaw rule. And obviously they can be fanatics and they've got the tank on the special rule as well. Quite flavorful in the game, quite handy to have those two machine guns in an early war squad. So then you've got the late war variant difference between these obviously you can have assault rifles and two machine guns still panzer faust and obviously fanatics are plus three rules for, for per man and now i've got some waffen ss cavalry squads so i've got some cavalry i've got nine cavalry painted those up they were they were they were interesting contrast paints definitely helped in regards to doing the horses really happy with how they've all turned out so so we've got a bit of flavor here so we've got the 8th SS Cavalry Division was equipped as a cavalry division that is still made use of horses. It took part in anti-partisan fighting in the central Russia, where it was in, involved in massacre of civilians and the retreat of the retreat to I can't pronounce that. I want to say Dnipa. Nah, that's probably not right. In 1943, the division was destroyed during the siege of Budapest in 1945. Of the 30,000 men, only 800 survived in the fighting in Russian, fighting ruthless Russian reprisals. When in combat, the mounted troops generally dismounted and fought on foot. So, basically, I've got these units so they can get around the table quickly. So, they're all this is a new one cavalry carbines. So, you can take them, they've got cavalry carbines of 13 points each. The NCO and up to two men can have submachine guns, you can have two LMGs in these squads. The entire squad may be mounted on horses two points each and the weapon, you get the Waffen SS uh, Fanatic Special Rule. So they got the mounted squad using cavalry rules, so the cavalry carbines. So these short barrel rifles count as pistols from horseback and rifles when used on foot. So you've still got a six inch range on horseback, but you've got your obviously 24 inch range once you dismount. So. It's really weird because I, I don't imagine using the cavalry within six inches of another unit to be honest. 
um, find that quite weird. I guess it's designed so you can't just, you know, encircle your enemy and shoot and keep moving, shoot and keep moving. Uh, massive amounts of differences. So that's more of a balancing thing. But again, I'm really, really excited with these models. These are the Warlord Games models. I've got two of the normal, like, rifle sections that come with it, and I've also got uh, the LMG sort of version as well. I've nicked one of the heads actually from the Pioneers squad because it comes with two officer heads and obviously I don't want two officers um, I only want the one so I nicked one of the Pioneers squads uh, heads for that and so a little bit of kit bashing going on there so happy with that so skip over that one because I haven't got any so I will mention the Volks Grenadier squad because it's really nice and flavoursome I don't technically have the models per se, but I can make them up of units. So this is a inexperienced infantry section. So you're getting some inexperienced troops for 65 points. The reason they're so expensive for inexperience is because they're armed with assault rifles. So you can have a 10 man assault rifle squad pretty cheaply, but, but, but there are some negatives to that. Obviously they've got the mixed quality. So special rule mix quality volts grenadier squads are green and must take a test when they first suffer a casualty as described in page 9 of the rule book however if volts grenadiers are upgraded to regular as a result of the test they then roll a further dice on a five or six they're upgraded to vets so <laughs> if you're rolling really lucky you can get them up to veteran for the cheap price again it's a flavorsome unit it's designed you know for the older the old school guys from the First World War doing defending. So they've got a bit of experience and that's shown in here. So I do like that, how they can get upgraded to veteran from just different from the green special rule where they just take the rule check like Liam gets two of his Russians get and he always passes it as well. So next one, we haven't got any Luftwaffe field divisions. So they're basically the same. Except for their green, they got the green special rule as just the normal army guys. So you got the Volkstrom squad. So I haven't got any of those, but I will tell you they're green as well. It's just it's just flavoursome units really. Uh, they're designed for like end of the war, late war. Hitler Youth again. Haven't got any Hitler Youth. Um, do actually want to get a squad of these, uh, especially if we're doing like Battle of Berlin at some point. Obviously, you had the Hitler Youth fight, uh, fighting again, controversial subject. They have got a special rule which is party indoctrination. Hitler Youth squads are green and must take a test when they first suffer a casualty. However, if the Hitler Youth squad is upgraded to regular, they can do the same. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, they five or six, they actually become fanatics. So they roll a regular, so they stay regular, but then on a five or six, they actually become fanatics. And they've also got the bicycle special rule as well. Oh, that's quite interesting as well. It takes a bit of time sometimes when you read these special rules. You think, oh, I haven't used that unit before, you know? Um, I haven't got any Kriegsmarine squad, so they're basically sailors. Uh, they're inexperienced. Um, anything interesting with them? Not really, just, just inexperienced sailors. So, here we go. Nickname for the MG42, the Spandau. Um, it says here, so top secrets. There are two theories about the source of Spandau Ballet. Some maintain it was Allied troops on the Western Front slang to describe the twitch of the men that were hit by the German machine gun fire. This was due to the common mistake of referring to an MG42 as a Spandau machine gun because of the false belief that it was built in Germany city of Spandau. Others believe the term comes from the execution of Nazi war criminals after the war that were carried out in the Spandau prison by hanging and therefore Spandau Ballet was slang for kicking and conclusive of the hanged prisoners as they died. Regardless of which two theories about such a grim term right is right, we can agree that nobody in their right mind would consider naming a brand after it and you know this much is true. So. A little bit of history for you there for the for the Spandau Ballet Ballet, and we are moving on. So, media machine gun team. 
Right, I've got a few of these in the army. So I've got one for my Grenadiers, I've got one for my Early War Blitzkrieg, and I do have one for my Africa Corps. Again, I've got a model here from the Assault Group miniatures. It's, uh, in my opinion, much easier <laughs> than the Warlord kits. Even though the Warlord kits, you can see the difference that the machine gun is actually lower uh, on the tripod. This actual one from the Assault Group comes in one piece and I know people hate building those machine guns from the Warlord kit because I'm one of them as well. I can't stand doing it, it drives me bloody insane. Um, I do prefer the Assault Group miniatures one, like I say it's one piece and it just goes straight on the base. do really like it, it comes with four guys instead of the three. Uh, I know, you know in bolt action it's only three but you know chain of command and stuff like that as well. I can imagine that makes an impact. But it's nice, you get extra models and it's about the same price, and I prefer it. So you can take this as inexperienced, regular or veteran. It's a three man team. It's got the team weapon and fixed special rule. So with the fixed special rule, basically it's got a firing arc. So if you've got it set up with a 90 degree, with a 90 degree fixed firing arc, if you get a unit of infantry, say flanking on your right, you have to rotate the model round to get them in your firing arc so it counts as moving so you've got the team weapon as well so if a sniper shoots at these guys gets a six and kills the guy the gets it yeah gets a six then rolls another six to destroy the weapon it destroys the weapon takes out the team as well so i'm i'm really it's weird i don't like that rule just for the fluff value I can imagine, obviously a sniper shooting and he kills one of the guys, fine. I can't imagine the other two guys running away straight away. They're going to get on the machine gun and redeploy it. But I can see why they've done it because you've got some heavy weapons and things that have uh, got the team, you know, the team weapon special rule. Snipers have got themselves. So if you kill the sniper and you get a six, you take out the whole team. But it's not my favourite rule um, because it, it can be quite frustrating to lose a whole machine gun team with one shot. And the chances of them actually hitting the machine gun and disabling it are pretty rare. But I do... Again, is it worth running these? Is it not? Only for the Germans because you get that Blitzkrieg special rule. If it's not for the Germans, I wouldn't probably... I've stopped running medium machine guns. Because I think they're, they are a waste of points. You can use that point somewhere else. You get a five-man infantry squad with the rapid fire special rule for the British, for example, uh, and get six shots instead of the five that the machine gun gives you, and you've got the movability in it as well. So, next kit, Panzer Shrek. So, picked this up at Warlord uh, on my birthday this year, actually, uh, before lockdown in January. Do like the kit. Got it painted up for uh, like early to mid-war in the. Uh, see, see, you guys might agree or you might disagree with me, right? I went along the line of the classic movie sort of German and what Warlord used for their for their colours. So more blue trousers and a grey, you know, green field grey uh, tunic. I know they were more field grey all over, but I've done that to differentiate my really early war to my mid to my late war grenadiers. I've put it so I could use them in, say, early war situations and mid, early to mid war situations, so they can use things like Panzer Shreks and stuff like that. Let me know in the comments below if you think that's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, also, took some reference off the Stalingrad film. Great film, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Um, shows the German side of uh, Battle of Stalingrad some of their uniforms in there they've obviously got the more green tunic and the blue trousers and I just like the look of it to be honest and at the end of the day they're my models and I like it so I could paint in pink if I really wanted to I'm not sure you play against me but there we go but I digress the pan strike so you can take these as inexperienced regular or veteran two-man team uh, they've got the shape charge special rule and the team weapon special rule so again Hit by a sniper, they can be taken out both at once if it, if it destroys the Panzer Shrek. Shape charge is quite nice. I believe that is a plus four pen uh, value, which is very nice, and it ignores armor skirts. 
this is like the American bazooka. It's got a 24 inch range. Very nice, very nice. I'm gonna start running this a lot more because it's nice to have, sometimes it's nice to have this anti-tank capability than say, on top of say, a uh, anti-tank gun as well but not take a tank in that tank slot. So maybe take an armored car or something like that. Um, like your Puma, if you want to take that, or if you want to take some anti-aircraft capability like the SDK FZ-222, which we'll talk about later. Uh, you can take an auto cannon with that. But that's, again, it's nice to have because you've got movable 24 inch range anti-tank with a plus four pen, which is very nice. And um, you still got your fixed like heavy anti-tank gun somewhere on the table so very nice so definitely consider taking this for 80 points so you got the anti-tank rifle team now I have got one of these for late war um, and I've also got one for my mid to early war section for like the Stalingrad stuff reason I got the late war painted up, you would think, why have you got an anti-tank rifle team in late war? I just <laughs> I just had the model spare, so it was done in that. So there we go. That's why. You can, it's handy for as a sniper as well, to be honest with you, because it's got that plus one penetration value, which is really nice. So if you're hitting a veteran unit with it, you know, you, you, you're hitting them on a four instead of a five, killing them on a four instead of a five. So that can make a massive difference. And you can also take out armor cars if the enemy is taking an armored car. It's just another pestering sort of thing, and it's only it's only thirty points at regular, um, which I really do like. So it's just got the team weapon special rule, two man team. Next one is the Goliath demolition team. I do have this again, as you can see, and um, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit like the dogs for the Russians. The Russians get to take suicidal dogs um, for the Goliath. It's like an assault engineer, little tracked tank vehicle that goes underneath enemy tanks and blows up. So I'll read you the fluff for it. The, Gli the Goliath was used by German engineer units in a variety of roles. It was essentially a radio controlled tracked bomb carrying a big charge of high explosives directed where it needed to be, commonly a pillar box, minefields or disabled an enemy tank. So that's quite cool to use in against buildings. The controller steered the robot tank by using a wire connected simple control box, Goliath was fairly successful on many fronts, and although slow and vulnerable to small arms fire, would be frightening sight to be rumbling towards you with deadly payload. Agreed, very much agreed. But to go against bunkers or stuff like that, or houses and stuff, to drive it in there, that's uh, that's pretty interesting because it doesn't say you have to target a tank with this. So it's got the tank hunter special rule, so it doesn't have to take the check. It's got remote operated mine. So the Goliath model itself is just a marker and is treated as a one shot weapon at a range of 18 inches. So you've got 18 inches. Goliath can only target station ah there we go. Goliath can only target stationary vehicles. Any vehicle that is not sporting an order of dice showing a run or advance order. So that's interesting. That's interesting. So if the unit's moved, the Goliath can't target it. Or a unit inside a building. There we go. There's the building. So Goliaths are fired as normal, except instead of rolling to hit, the following chart... Yeah, so you consult the chart instead. Note that if the if a recce vehicle reacts to the Goliath attack by moving, the mine automatically scores a 1-2-4 result. So if a recce, if you don't want to target recce with this, basically, unless it, um, you really have to. So 1-4, to the Goliath breaks down or is damaged. Or prematurely detonates by enemy fire. The Goliath model is removed and has no effects. So, in other words, do not target recce vehicles with a Goliath. The Goliath on a five or a six, so reaches a target and is detonated. If the target is a vehicle, it suffers with a hit of a plus seven, seven penetration value. So that's a he super heavy anti-tank gun pen value. Wow, that is uh, crazy. And look, it's sixty points. <laughs> Wow, that is actually insane. If the unit is inside a building, the unit is hit by a equivalent of a heavy howitzer. Wow. Remember that if a unit, uh, if that, remember that if the explosion scores a 12 or more hits, it brings down the entire building, killing everyone inside. So that is really good. And I'm going to have to start running that, aren't I? 
<laughs> Liam is not going to like that at all. So I am going to definitely start running that. Maybe not against tanks, but against buildings. That, that thing sounds absolutely wicked. So, don't have a sniper team for my Germans. Very strange, I know. I probably do need to make one up, but there we go. So, I do have a separate flamethrower, which is probably one of the coolest models that I actually have. Uh, Warlord have done a really nice job of, uh, as you can see, the flames, actually putting them on the model. So, I've painted them using contrast paints. They're a little bit dark, I know, but if I want to in the future, I could go over a dry brush and brighten that up a little bit. So 50 points for a regular, 65 for a vet. So you've got a choice of infantry flame for a, one infantry flame for a, or two one shot infantry flame throwers. Hmm, that's quite interesting. I believe the one shot flame thrower is on a D6, uh, D6 hits, and it runs out on a two, uh, anything a one plus when you fired it, or you can take two one shots, which I believe are only one hit each time, but I don't think it has to take the special rule where you run out of fuel. I'll have to confirm that, or if you know, again, stick it in the comment section below. I do have a light mortar, and that is for my Africa Core. So it's 24 points in experience, 35 reg, or 46 for a veteran. Don't tend to run these very much, to be honest with you. It's more I had a spare model and if I wanted to do something a little bit different I could run a light mortar. It team weapon again, indirect fire, HE is D3. Um That's a bit strange. Oh yeah, D3. I'm getting confused. I haven't but I haven't played in ages to be honest with you. So difference between this and a medium, it can't fire smoke. So again, don't tend to run this. Obviously, the medium mortar, backbone of every army, you got to take one of these. And uh, you got to add the spot on for 10 extra points. And I would always take it a regular. Me and Liam did a cheeky thing once upon a time and we're taking it as inexperienced because uh, you could stick it out of the way and it's indirect. So you wouldn't have to worry about hitting on, you always hit on a six anyway. But we found out you can't do that. You can't take a spotter um, with an inexperienced one. So. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, you've also got the heavy mortar. Oh yeah, it's got, sorry, it's got the indirect fire special rule, so it doesn't need to have line of sight. And the heavy mortar team, again, I don't have one. Uh, difference is it's a bigger template, and it's still got the in, indirect fire special rule. So, field artillery. Let's crack on with that. And first of all, got light artillery. I don't really have any light artillery. Uh, or me, to be honest with you, I don't have the howitzers at all. It's uh, not something that I've ever been really interested in. I should probably look into this a bit more because I'm realising the game's more about anti-infantry than it is anti-tank if I want to do something a bit different. So, honourable mention here is the Nebelwerfer. So, 150mm. 65 points, I'd always take it a regular if I could. Uh, so it's treated as a heavy mortar. So options, fielders, a howling cow rocket, reduce the crew of two, so neg 10 points. So you've got an option to take it as that. Uh, it's got multiple launcher special rule, which I believe when it hits, if it hits, it can then hit again and you measure a different distance. So it can scatter, a bit like a scatter dice. Uh, if you use the games workshop, which is uh, quite cool. So you can cover a large area. Again, none of those anti-aircraft guns. Probably going to look into getting one of these after I've seen Dom use one, especially the uh, the quad barrel one. So you get the flak special rule with these guys, and you've also got like four auto cannons on a rotating platform. Very nice for 135 points. That's that's a lot of shots. So they're two shots each. So it's eight shots, uh, and I believe they're a plus two pen as well. So definitely interested in taking one of them. So I do have one of these. So the Flak 36 dual purpose anti-air and anti-tank gun, the ATA. Absolutely love this. 160 points a regular, seven man team. It's a super heavy anti-tank gun on a rotating platform for 360 degrees. So 
when it rotates, it doesn't have to take the um, minus one for movement. So you can add a spot of 10 points. I would always do that. So it's got a gun shield, it's a team weapon, it's fixed, um, it's flak special rule and versatility. So it can also be fired as a medium howitzer. That's very handy because that obviously you do that indirect um, if you need to um, as a medium howitzer. So, and you know you're, it's a three inch template, so very handy for dealing with infantry as well as tanks. That um, team weapon special rule is very interesting actually because if a sniper shoots at that, it can destroy the gun. So this is why I don't like that rule. It doesn't make any sense. So rolls a six and rolls a six again it will destroy the whole team one sniper bullet I, d I don't agree with that um, obviously it's in there for the game fluff reasons but you would definitely 100% not have a team abandon their gun because one guy was killed um, it just wouldn't happen you do get the plus one um, for the gun shield but again that doesn't matter against um, snipers so I think snipers are a bit OP <laughs> you're probably working that out um, and maybe I should get one <laughs> but that is very good I, lo I do love that anti-tank gun so pack 40 I do have one of these this is for my uh, later war grenadiers it's four man team heavy anti-tank gun gun shield again team weapon and it's fixed and that comes in at 110 points as a regular unit little bit more expensive than some of the others so like the British got the six pounder and that's I believe it's only 90 points it's not 110 I know that much um, but the reason for that is obviously it's a heavy anti-tank gun instead of a medium and you've got a four-man team instead of a three-man team right moving on interesting part for some people is vehicles so I do have a few German vehicles I'm just going to skip over the ones I don't have. So that's all the Panzer 3s. And I, here we go. So start with the Panzer 4s for the tanks. So I've got two variants of the Panzer 4. I've got the Panzer 4, B, C, D, E, and F. So those models. Basically, they've got a light howitzer on the front, with a coaxial medium machine gun, and a forward facing whole machine gun. It does have a plus 9 armor. I am going to repaint this, um, as you can see. I've done, I did it in like later war camo, and a Panzer IV like that just doesn't suit late war camo. And now I have an Africa Corps army that needs a tank. It's going to get repainted into Africa Corps style. Could do, could have done it at early war, but now I'm going to go with it for Africa Corps. So that's actually going to be stripped and redone. I'm going to paint that with the airbrush. And uh, yeah, I would only probably take that in the Africa Corps armies if I wanted to take a tank. Um, so it is it's a hard one really because it has the light howitzer and it does have the two machine guns if that was a median howitzer all day long I'd probably take it but as the light howitzer it, it's hard you can do you fire both machine guns and or do you fire the light howitzer and the machine gun it's just a hard one it's not, norm, it's not one of my favourite tanks and so I've also got the Panzer IV G H J. So this one's 235. You get it at regular. Uh, you can take it at vet or in experience as well. It's got a heavy anti-tank gun, so it's the same as the Pack 40 gun. Uh, it's got a coaxial medium machine gun and a forward-facing medium machine gun, and this is a nine plus armor. Love this tank. I think it's absolutely awesome. It's plus 10 points if you want side skirts, which obviously give you the protection from the sides does have the Tiger Veer special rule. This tank used to be absolutely the best tank for, to take by far because it had the Tiger Veer special rule so everyone kept having to roll morale checks, had a heavy anti-tank gun on it, it was pretty cheap for what it was um, and it was really was a good all-round tank, really did like this tank. I still like it and it's probably one of the best all-rounders for me in the game, I really do enjoy it. Um, we got the Panther next. I do have a Panther and I love it, <laughs> just because it's so big. Uh, I have the earlier war version of it, so I think it's the G or the D, one of the two. People will correct me below after looking at the model. 
but this is more for my like 1500 to 2000 point games I wouldn't run this in like a thousand point games very often um, so this has got a super heavy anti-tank gun so just like the Tiger and it's got a plus nine medium tank so this is the difference this is only a plus nine where the Tigers are heavy um, it's got that extra armor and that's what you pay the points for so you can take a pinnacle mounted machine gun and it does have the Tiger Fear special rule but the nice thing about the Panther is because it's got sloped armor on the front uh, it says here the Panther heavy frontal armor was comparable to that to much heavier tanks because it was sloped so against all shots on the front the vehicle counts as a plus 10 so if you can keep the front pointing towards the enemy you know you're getting a plus 10 uh, save instead of the 9 just gives you a little bit of flavour here about uh, how uh, Michael Vittman so Michael Whitman, uh, the Tiger Ace, um, just gives you a bit of story about him there. Don't have a don't have a Tiger, don't have a Tiger Two. So moving on to the tank destroyers. So got Stug. So I've got I believe the Stug Three. Um, I'm not too up with the Stugs. It could even be a Stug Four. I, I've, I'm pretty sure it's a Stug Three though. Or is it a Stug Four? No, I've changed my mind. It's Stug 4. I'm going to go Stug 4. <laughs> so, it's 190 points. It's got a cemented uh, mounted forward face in me. No, it's definitely not that. It's not the Stug 4 because that's a medium howitzer. It's this one, the Stug 3. Because so I've got a anti tank gun, heavy anti tank gun on it. And it's got a 360 uh, medium machine gun. So, you can also take side skirts for 10 points. Um, I do have this, I don't run it, because why would I run that for 230 when I could run for 230 for 5 points more, a Panzer IV, which has a turret that rotates, um, 9 plus armour, 9 plus armour, so all 9 pluses, and this has got the Tiger Fear Special Rule, plus an extra machine gun. Why would I ever run that? If anyone can justify to me why they would run a Stug Free over a Panzer IV, I am always. Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, that doesn't get used. <laughs> Unless the scenario dictates it must be a Stug free, but that just makes no sense to me whatsoever why you would take one of these. And I even asked the Warlord, and even the guy at Warlord said, yeah, you wouldn't take the Stug. <laughs> so there you go. Don't have any more tank destroyers. You got. You know, you've got some really late war stuff here, like the Ferdinand and the Elephant. Uh, 11 plus uh, super heavy anti-tank gun. It's got the slow special rule in it. Um, yeah, that thing is just huge. I've seen models of it. <laughs> crazy, really. Absolutely crazy. It's 500 points at regular. That's insane. Insane. And then you get down to the lower end. I'm going to mention these because... You know this little this little Panzer Jaeger one, okay. Really interesting because Dom used it on me, and I didn't believe how good it would be at early war. It's 115 points for a mobile medium uh, anti-tank gun. It's got a seven plus armor and it's open tops. But I tell you what, for early war, if you've got a vehicle slot, that Panzer Jaeger one is pretty good. Did some good damage to me, to be honest with you. And then you can upgrade. Obviously, you'll go into the Marder series of stuff. Love the look of the Marder series of tanks. Love the Marder 3 as well. Um, but you've got to remember, a lot of these are all open topped and they got the 7 plus armor, uh, like the armor value. This open top rule, this is another debatable one. Again, if you're getting shot at from the front and you've got sides, you've got skirts like this and it's normal rifle fire, I don't think that open top rule should count. I really don't because they're going to be in there loading the gun. If you're shooting it from the rear, where it's massively open, then I think the open top rule should count. And like you've got the half tracks. It's again, it's a 50-50. I know with the half tracks, some of the head, you know, if they didn't have the like, um, high size, if you had a really tall guy, heads would be sticking out and stuff like that. But it's a very strange one. I, I'm not too sure I agree with the open top rule with, uh, with these. Um, maybe we do a modified version to say if they're hit from the rear, because these are tank destroyers. You know, they're not. They shouldn't be taking inventory fire. They should be massively back. So maybe a modified rule would be a good idea for these sort of things. And let's let's just keep checking. 
So I do have an FDK FZ 251-22, the Pat Wagon. No, no I don't, no I don't, no I don't. I'm getting confused. Um, no, I don't have one of those. I'm just trying to check if there's anything else that I do have in here. This side of things. Nope. No, definitely not. Any aircraft vehicles? No, don't have any of those. Armour cars, here we go. Armour cars section. So, the FDK FZ 222. Love this little car. Really nice kit from Rubicon Models. And, um, yeah, I've got it with the auto cannon and the medium machine gun variant. I've got two of these, actually. The first one you can see is painted. Uh, the second one I haven't painted up. This is gonna go. That's going to go with my Africa core. And I'm going to do it in the same variant. Again, this is another one I don't think should have the open top special rule. Reason being, as you can see, this guy, this one's set with the uh, German sitting on top. And um, but if you notice, it's got these anti-grenade meshes, so they fold down. So when you're in combat, they they would mo you you know you'd most likely be down. So it's a really hard one. I don't think these should have the open top special rule. Strangely, but see what you can see what you guys think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think. Should they have it? Should they not? Should they have it? Should they not? If they don't have it, maybe an extra five points um, just to pay for that. So basically they've got a 7 plus armor value again and different variants. So you've got a machine gun variant with a radio um, which gives you the command vehicle special rule. Uh, you've got the light auto cannon obviously with the single turret and you've got a reduction of 25 points. Uh, but you can also have a Panzer Brush for an extra 10 Points. I believe that's an anti-tank gun of some sort. Um, wouldn't take that. I'd keep the auto cannon. I wouldn't be getting this involved in tank fighting at all. Um, this is going to be just an harassing drive around the map, shooting at infantry just to annoy him sort of thing. So it's got the open top recce. Love the recce rule. I'll explain it a little bit. So recce rule is basically you can move your movement value back, or it might even be half your movement value. Again, let me know in the comment section below. I'm trying to get you to talk in the comments today, as you can probably tell. Uh, it's there, so you have to move straight back, basically. I think it's the whole movement value. And obviously, that's if you haven't used your order dice. So it can get you out of the, out of the poopy, as we as we say. Um, flak special rule is just for the 222 only. Uh, the reason for that is it's got the light auto cannon. Really do, really do. Like this vehicle. So, next one is going to be the Puma. Right. Everyone knows who's watched my bolt action battle reports. I have had absolutely shocking luck with this thing. Either I'm using it completely wrong or it is actually rubbish. But it can't be because it is bloody good. <laughs> it's, on paper, it's amazing. But when I use it, I absolutely suck at it. And Everyone I speak to says, yeah, the Puma's great, the Puma's amazing. Reason being, it's 160 points for regular. Okay, it's got a light anti-tank gun on it. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, no, light tank. Jesus, I nearly had a heart attack then. So, you know, it definitely ain't worth it. It's got a medium anti-tank gun. Uh, it's got a co-action machine gun, so you can either shoot the machine gun or the anti-tank gun. Um, but it's got the recce rule and dual directional steering. Right. What is dual directional steering? So this means that it can manoeuvre when it's doing a recce movement. So when it's reversing back, it can turn, um, which is very handy. I seriously, seriously need to run this a bit more to get some more testing out of it because I must be doing something wrong. Because on paper, it looks absolutely awesome. But I just, uh, yeah, I just can't get, it to, can't get it to work, which is quite sad because, yeah, it's got the open top special rule. No, it doesn't. Oh no. I'm looking at the heavy armor car again. <laughs> I was going to say, what the hell? That doesn't make no sense. Um, but yeah, it's on the Puma chassis. Very nice. And um, I should use it a lot more. I'm going to have to start trying it. But the problem is, it takes up that tank slot. And I could have a Panzer IV. So 
I guess if I've got going, if I want something a bit cheaper, but I've still want an anti-tank gun capable of killing things, I guess go with that. I'm gonna have to just try it and see what I can do. So I don't have the 234-3. I do have a 3D printed uh, 234-4 heavy armored car version of this. So basically, it's an anti-tank gun on the Puma chassis, uh, but it's a heavy anti-tank gun. Also got a pinnacle mounted mini machine gun. It's got a plus seven armor because it's open topped and it does have the recce special rule, but not dual steering, um, which is a shame. I wish it did have dual steering because that would make that a lot more enticing because you could get that out of the way. Maybe it'd be a bit too OP if it did. But again, I'm very happy with the model. The model STL file I found for this, the wheels are the wrong size. So what I did is I found a Puma there was 156 scale uh, just on like Thingiverse and then I printed the Puma on the not didn't print the Puma but I put the Puma on the slicing software and then I took because the wheels are separate on this uh, this vehicle I took them and I basically just copied them to size because uh, obviously I know the 156 wheels are right and yeah it come out perfectly the uh, wheels were spot on for the size they should have been so very happy with that and I also stuck, <laughs> stuck some camo like uh, bushy stuff on it. Reason behind that is because there was a few few little joint issues, so I uh, plugged the holes with uh, some camouflage. So what else have we got in the armored car section? I think that was it. Anything else worth a mention? Oh yeah, motorcycle, there you go. Uh, so I've got motorcycle with a sidecar, so, 40 points, and this is for the Africa Core, forward facing machine gun, soft skin, so Ricky, turn on the spot, so these motorbikes are large and agile and can turn on the spot, enabling them to execute full speed run, reverse, finishing, moving, facing the direction they travel. For some reason, I don't know why, but the Africa Core one's armed with an SMG and not a machine gun, but when I play, I'll use it as a machine gun. Um, I can't un I can't understand for me why that is. If you know again why it's on with a SMG and not a machine gun, can you let me know? Because I've looked through this book loads of times and I can't find that model with just an SMG in it. I can only find motorcycle with a machine gun. So if you could let me know, that'd be great. Okay, so let's start with the transports now. So straight off the bat, we've got the SDKFZ 251-1 half track which is the Hanamag classic mini um, really really good little transport all rounder uh, nice thing about these FDKF Zs um, you can get different variants so you can get some we've got anti-tank guns in some with mortar carriers you know they really are uh, versatile um, machines so the Ger I'll read a bit of fluff about it. The German army had a large range of half-track vehicles as transports and tows that's so proper mechanized and even converted soft skin lorries to half-tracks to be enabled to cope with conditions on the Russian front. So a bit of fluff on the Hanamag itself. When the concept of a fully mobile and tank equipped panzer division was being developed, there was a requirement issued for an armored infantry carrier capable of accompanying the tanks on the battlefield and to allow infantry units to be known as Panzer Grenadiers to keep pace with an advance. So in other words, basically they needed a way for the infantry to be able to keep up with the tanks because um, on foot infantry cannot keep up with tanks. The Hanamag named uh, after its manufacturer, I cannot pronounce that, I. <laughs> Hanover Sturm Maschine B B U A A G. I yeah, I completely destroyed that. Um, was the ambitious? I can't even pronounce that word. German half track used throughout World War II to transport mechanized infantry units. The carrier version was adapted into various roles, including the additional close support such as anti tank guns, flamethrowers, anti aircraft guns, and even rockets. Engineering variants included bridge and telephone line layers, whilst further examples were built into radio cars, ambulances, command vehicles, and standard infantry carrier version was the 251-1. You're probably wondering why I say 251. I don't know. Instead of saying 251-1, I said 251. Uh, was able to carry 12 men in addition to its own crew. It was 
armed with a single pinnacle mounted MG-34 machine gun and a second rear mounted for anti-aircraft machine gun which was often not used. The earlier Alf's C vehicle was replaced by the Alf's D model simply to simplify and speed up manufacturing process. Uh, principal service from 1939 to 1945, the numbers manufactured, there was over 15,000 of these manufacturers throughout the war uh, in all the different variants. Okay, so I would only be taking the forward machine gun, I don't use the rear one, just preference. Uh, it does give you the flak special rule, I think, if you um, take the rear one, because I think it's, or is it, no, it doesn't, does it? No, not by the looks of it. It's only got the open top special rule, which is interesting. I would, yeah, so I'll just keep with the forward facing one. I wouldn't pay the extra points. And uh, it's 15 points, yeah, medium machine gun covering the rear arc. Oh, so it only covers the rear arc anyway. Uh, I wouldn't bother with that. Normally, you're advancing your troops forward and get them out, and then the half track start to move back a little bit. Um, reason being is because it's got a special rule. If you've got a transport, then enemy infantry models are closer to it than your own, then it gets taken and removed from place. So you're losing all the dice straight away, so I wouldn't I wouldn't bother putting the rear one on it. You can also exchange the MMG on the front for a Panzerbrush 41, which it, I believe is only for the Pioneer units. Yeah, Pioneer units only. So you can change it for that if you want to. Different variants you've got here. We've got one which is a 7 plus what's the weapon damage on it what's it got it's got a forward facing light anti-tank gun so in the band of brothers starter set I've got that for one of these I've repainted it and re-rejigged it about um, it's got you know, I've just realized I'm missing a half track hmm no I'm not no I'm not what am I talking about no I'm not it's right there <laughs> uh, yeah so this one's got the light anti tank gun. I, again, I wouldn't bother with it, to be honest with you. It's got command vehicle special rule. I've also got other versions here. So it may. So this one's got light howitzer. This is a 250 1, so it's an earlier variant. Um, what other stuff have we got in here? Obviously, just your standard truck. Um, just useful anyway. The half tracks again, standard truck 12, it's cheap points, no weapons, you can I think add a machine gun to these. These were designed for use in Russia, um, nice way of getting your troops up the field again in one of these cheaply if you don't want to pay for the armour, it's soft skinned. Reason being is it can go across rough ground whereas a normal truck uh, can't. Just an honourable mention here. I know Dom's got one of these uh, swim wagons. He's just done a uh, video on it. 26 points. Tiny little thing it is actually. He's got it from Rubicon. Check out his video. I'll link that on the top. And um, what have you got here? Pinnacle mounted machine gun covering the front arc if you want to. But it loses all its transparency. So it's just a cheap uh, medium machine gun basically. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's 41 points. 41 points and you get a mobile medium machine gun that's, that's not bad at all actually it's a bit like the motorbikes you can get a mobile one of those so that, that's quite a interesting little thing actually and it's amphibious so it can cross water that is pretty cool I did not notice that before but I tell you what that's uh, sp spiked my interest a little bit and yeah got an ambulance version here so I don't run ambulances normally, it'd be good for a little bit of fluff. I have got these tops here that came with the Rubicon kit. So it's interesting, I guess I wouldn't be able to paint on the side the uh, Red Cross symbols, but I would be able to put a Red Cross symbol on the top. So I could whack it on top of one of these half tracks at any point, just to say it was an ambulance if I wanted to do it. Good thing about an ambulance is you get a 12 inch uh, I think it's what is it six feet all units and six inches of vehicle cab and six inches of a medic so it'd be nice if that was a 12 inch buff instead of a six uh, but it does give you a seven plus save for a medic medic unit which is which is not too bad 
So that's all the units. I'll leave models shown in the background anyway, and I'll just talk about the theater selector bits in here. So you've got Blitzkrieg from 1939 to 42, gives you an army list here, so the September campaign. Also got the Battle of France, which is 1940. Again, these, these give you a list of what you can and can't, so you can take in that list. So if you wanted to play a Battle of France, you know, you can come to this page and it will say what you can have in your list. You need to remember this sort of thing because things like Battle Scribe, you need to be careful. I've been caught out a few times with it. If you don't know what Battle Scribe is, it's an app on your phone, you can build lists for it. But it, unless you select the correct theatre list, you won't get all these different options. I have found Easy Army uh, is, is a bit better, to be honest, and it's kept up to date a lot more. You've also got Operation Barbarossa, which is 1941. I've used this list a, fair, a few times. Uh, definitely used this a few times against Liam. Uh, then you've got 42, which is Operation Blue. You've got 42 Stalingrad, Death of the Volga. And then you've got 41 to 42, which is uh, Rommel's Triumphant. So this is like your Africa Corps list. I know that there has been, obviously, the Western Desert book out. So that gives you more flavour and more fluff to do with just the Africa core. It's the same with a lot of these. Obviously, you've got the Stalingrad list in here. If you've just got the main rule book and your armies book, you can use these lists. But the Stalingrad book and all the theatre selector books are more there to uh, give you more lists per se and more fluff behind that specific theatre campaign. These are just giving you an overall sort of look but it gives you a rough idea you can start at 39 work your way through the whole war then you've got operation mercury in 1941 and you've got rommel's the free uh, that's 1942 to 43 and then you've got operation citadel which is on the eastern front in 1943 to 44 and uh, you've got anti-partisan security patrol so in here you've got things like the cavalry so they're unique for this security list you can you can take the cavalry which is really nice units of hair grenadiers cannot be equipped with assault rifles so it gives you like special rules because obviously you could normally take a grenadier squad but no assault rifles not allowed and defense of the east 44 then you've got the western front so 43 to 44 defense of italy you've got the atlantic wall And then you've got 44, which is like Normandy. This is mainly the fear to me and Liam seem to be playing in mostly. Uh, we don't specifically use these lists, but they're there to give you a little bit of fluff. We, to be fair, we could try it out, but we've got specific theatre books. But if you're just starting out and you just want to get like the main rule book and an armies of book, you've got stuff here to be able to play with, which is really nice and do a little campaign. Then you've got the fall of the Third Reich, which is 1945, so Operation Watch the Rhine, so this is when the Germans are on the, on the retreat. And there's some nice uh, units in here, like the, there's a nice picture here of the FDK of said 234 pack wagon. So I've got obviously my 3D printed one. Then you've got Holding the West Wall, which is 1944 to 45, then the Operation Spring Awakening. Last levy here in 1945. This is like the real defense of everything. So you've got some special rules. You've got fuel shortage special rules in here. And then you've got the appendix of the book. So we're getting right towards the end here. So you've got special rules for certain things. So you've got a Panzer Five Panther in here, Alps G with an infrared equipment. So it's 380 points, uh, turret mounted, super heavy anti-tank gun, forward facing MNG, whole MNG. And it's got one turret mounted 200 millimeter infrared searchlight on top of it uh, it's a nine plus tank so advanced armor it gives you the 10 plus save but then the 200 millimeter infrared searchlight uh, give, count count as a 24 plus yeah it confers a 24 a plus 24 modifier to the panther's spotting rolls so you know when you do night attacks and you can do night missions if you've got a panther and it's one of these it basically gives you plus 24 to whatever you roll. So if you roll a 12, you get the plus 24 on that, so you get 36. <coughs> You've also got the FDKFZ 251-20, which I think, yeah, it's just there. Basically got the big searchlight on top of it. It's 80 points regular, but this gives you a 600 millimeter infrared searchlight. 
Still seven plus because armor carried. And it's got 300, just 360 degree arc, so it can rotate around. So the 600 millimeter infrared searchlight gives you a range of 72 inches. Only works when reduced visibility applies because of night conditions, so not for fog. So it doesn't work for fog uh, other, or other weather conditions. Uh, when firing this weapon, pick a target as normal for limited visibility rules, but with a plus 60 modifier. Look at that, that's, that's very good. So if you're gonna be playing night fighting, for 80 points to negate that rule, I tell you what, that is one hell of an advantage over your opponent. Uh, the Germans get this, and I'm pretty sure nobody else actually gets this infrared technology because you've got to remember the Germans had, you know, he, Liam Liam will say the same as me. You know, the German engineering even today is absolutely amazing. Um, everyone knows Germany for their cars, how, how well engineered they are, and you've got things like Russian T-34s with welds the size of my arm uh, gaps, <laughs> which we have seen, and I can confirm at the tank museum in Bovington. Uh, you know, beautiful uh, motherland welding, but then you've got precision uh, German engineering with it's just ahead of its time. All loads of stuff. You know, war drives technology, and the Germans were at the forefront of all that. And you've got a Nightjäger squad, uh, which means in German night hunters. Hopefully, I said that wrong. They were handpicked SS and Wehrmacht veterans, equipped with the uh, SDG 44 assault rifles. Uh, with vampire night fighting devices, these consisted of rifle scopes that allowed the soldiers to uh, the infrared spectrum, topped by small IR searchlights, powerful by a battery uh, that the soldiers were carrying in a pack. Shoulders of this system could be fitted to machine guns and other small weapons, where, wherever or not the night fighting elite units did actually see action or were still in training towards the end of the conflict is debated. But we think that it's likely that the dire straits of the last few months of the war, they were actually combat tested. So they can't confirm it, but logic would say they, they probably were in battle. Um, so they get a plus 15 modifier uh, for their spotting, and they've also got the Fanatics rule, which is quite interesting. Um, two of them can take uh, like machine guns with uh, the infrared searchlight on it and five additional men. Um, they are 125 points, and that is the end of the book. Just a couple of quick pointers, a little bit of history and things like that. I say this a lot, but a lot of people don't know that the Falschemjäger uh, FT, FG, F, the FG42 is actually an assault rifle. Um, it predated the STG44. And it's got a 20 round magazine where the SD, uh, STG44, I believe it's a 30 round mag, that it has, you know, it's the classic known assault rifle. But not a lot of people know that the uh, Luftwaffe had their own version of an assault rifle. Um, probably one of my favourite weapons, actually, of the Germans, because it's not widely known and not a lot of people know about it, unless you're a history buff like we are. But... You know, when you date back to thinking of the first proper modern assault rifle, you think of the STG-44 and not the FG-42. And that was around, well, as the name suggests, back in 1942. And uh, this this came out in 1943, 44. So it's it's just one of those interesting facts that I like to I like to mention. I'm probably completely wrong, and if I am, mention again in the comments section below. If you don't say anything, then I know hopefully I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's been my faction overview i hope everyone's enjoyed you know looking at the models and listening to me ramble on sorry it's been such a long ramble there's been a few edits in here because i've had phone calls from work and things but if you guys like this let me know and i'll try and do it from other factions but obviously remember this german faction is my biggest faction and i've got it out here on my kitchen table and i'm thinking uh yes yeah, it's, it's I've got a lot of points of Germans. There's over 7,000 points here. So definitely, definitely happy of the amount I've painted. There's a lot of models and um, it's good variety. I just need to win with the buggers. <laughs> I can't seem to win with them. Give me some tactics and comments what you think that I should be doing differently compared to some of the earlier battle reports. Because when me and Liam got back on the battle reports, I need to start winning some games just for my sanity. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think. 
And um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. And bye-bye for now.